At first glance, it seems hard to understand how Turkey could deny there was genocide. For centuries, Turks and Armenians had lived side by side in the multi-ethnic Ottoman Empire. In reprisal, Turkish leaders ordered a mass deportation of Armenians to the Syrian desert. Historians say as many as a million people perished. But history is viewed very differently in Turkey. Wars are fought over oil, land, water, but rarely over history. But that's what Turkey and Armenia are still fighting over. What to label the mass deportation and subsequent massacre of more than a million Christian Armenians from Ottoman Turkey during the First World War. Armenians and an overwhelming number of historians say that Turkey's rulers committed genocide, that its actions were a model for what Hitler did to the Jews. To this day, the Turks vigorously deny there was any such campaign. When we spoke to Nabi Sensoy, he was Turkey's ambassador to Washington. We were in Syria, sir, and we scratched the sand and came up with bones. How can you argue with that? Well, bones you can find anywhere in Turkey, you know. There, there, there have been a lot of tragedies that happened in those lands. Excuse yes. me, sir. We dug up these bones in a place called Der Zor, which Armenians say is their equivalent of Auschwitz. Well, I don't think there was any, anything comparable to Auschwitz. This was only deportation, and things happened on the road. But the it deportations was... entered in massacres, didn't they? No, it did not. Weren't there massacres, mass executions, and death marches of the Armenians? There was no death marches of Armenians. There was deportation, and tragic things happened. Um, many people perished under the deprivations of the First World War. The UN defines it as the intent to destroy a racial, ethnic, or religious group. The most important thing is the intent. The killings is something else. It's happened on both sides. But whether it constitutes genocide is another matter. It's a legal word, and it should not be lightly used. But you're saying there was no intention of there the Turkish no, government? There was no intention of annihilating in whole and part the Armenian population. This so-called genocide is certainly unfounded, uh, has no uh, factual basis, and there is certainly not enough uh, evidence and case for those what not. <laughs> We have Adolf Hitler saying eight days before invading Poland in 1939, who today, after all, speaks of the annihilation of the Armenians. Hitler was inspired by the Armenian extermination. You know, it made him think, well, sure, you know, uh, you can get rid of a hated minority group, and if you're powerful and your side wins, that event will never get recorded. The Turks dispute the evidence that Hitler ever uttered those words or was inspired by the events of 1915. Nonetheless, when the Ottomans were swept from power and the modern Turkish state was founded, all memory of what happened to the Armenians was erased. Bu şekilde Türkiye'de bir Ermeni lobisi oluşturulmuştur ama bu aslında Amerikan ve Avrupa Birliği 
The main goal was the cleansing of Anatolia of all non-Turkish elements and this was the non-Muslims and especially the Armenians. Kabul ediyorlar, kabul etmemizi de istiyorlar. Çünkü soykırım üzerine kurulmuş bir devlet uluslararası hukuka göre devlet sayılmıyor. Onların niyeti hep Türkiye'mizde parçalanak. When I grew up in Turkey, when I was there, people can't even whisper about Armenian genocide. There is nothing. You cannot even find information. So most people are ignorant. Shot dead in broad daylight, the prominent Turkish-Armenian writer Hrank Dink is murdered in Istanbul. First he was convicted of insulting Turkishness, then he was a frequent target of nationalist anger in Turkey. Now Hrank Dink has been shot dead in broad daylight outside his Istanbul office. The writer and journalist was one of the most prominent voices of Turkey's shrinking Armenian community. Well, this is the scene now in Istanbul where thousands of people have gathered at the site of the murder, which Turkey's Prime Minister has described as an attack on the nation's unity. <laughs> Dink is viewed as a martyr now in Armenia, where he is seen as the latest victim of the genocide. His picture emerges from the Wall of Flowers on a hillside outside the capital, Yerevan, where every April hundreds of thousands attend a memorial to remind the Turks and the world of what they went through. They pay homage to those who died nearly a century ago. It's as if the entire country turns out for what is emotionally a funeral, a burial, the victims never had, never had, never had, never had, never had. And on the same day, in Times Square, thousands of Armenian Americans gather to demand that Congress pass a resolution recognizing the genocide. Two years ago, when a resolution was to be put to a vote in the House, Turkey recalled Ambassador Sensoy in protest. Its president warned of serious troubles, and its top general said military ties with the U.S. would never be the same. To limit further damage, the Bush administration and eight former secretaries of state weighed in to kill the bill. It worked. Eight former secretaries of state rallied behind Turkey to defeat that resolution. Yes. Why do you think that was, sir? Well, I think it's the importance of Turkey for the United States. Um, we have a long list of positive agenda uh, between us. And the items on that list, Sensoy says, are far more important than the Armenian issue. Turkey is, after all, a regional superpower and an essential broker between the U.S. and the Muslim world. It has the second largest army in NATO, and the U.S. relies on the country's air bases for its wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. <laughs> 